The Awesome Games, known for the creation of Day of Dragons, recently released their first official game trailer. And let me just say, wow. You might not know it, considering I've never posted a video about it, but I'm a pretty avid player of Day of Dragons, with over 300 hours on my main account, and I even have a few alternates I play on as well. I heard about the game a long time ago when the Kickstarter was still active, but chose not to get involved because of all the controversy surrounding the game. But a couple years later, after a few videos appeared on my recommended, talking about whether or not this dragon game was a scam, with some creators even boasting full interviews with the lead developer confirming it was not a scam. I decided to give it a try. Be Awesome Games initially asked for $12,000 to make Day of Dragons, but to everyone's surprise, they got half a million instead, raising over $500,000 in less than a month to get their game off the ground. But what they released to players initially was nothing more than a massive disaster, with the demo having no sound, being comprised entirely of bought assets, and apparently no more than four lines of custom code. There were no screenshots of the code, and not even the concept art was their own. A game that supposedly was in the works two years before its debut on Kickstarter, a game that's campaign raised way more than what they asked for. This is when backers started to worry. Where was their money going? What was it being used for? Was Day of Dragons a scam? Things were in disarray. What was being shown to the backers was very little, and the lead developer was a ghost. When people would raise concerns, they'd be blacklisted from playing the game. It was not professional in the slightest. But if you want more information on that side of things, I recommend IGP's videos about the game. About a year later, the dev team finally released a custom-made game with their first original dragon. Or, well, sort of. I'm sure many of you are aware that the shadow scale is basically dollar store toothless, as I call it. And it's not the only one that is blatantly inspired by other dragons in media. Though I wouldn't say this is entirely a bad thing, since people love dragons and what better than to have the opportunity to play your favorite dragon from your favorite movie, TV show, or book. Even if these dragons are of the dollar store variety. People want a dragon game, and as a result the developers of Day of Dragons get to behave unprofessionally, act alarmingly suspicious, be ignorant towards their player base, and produce barely anything for the amount of money their players are spending to support the game. When I bought the game, it was around $16 Canadian. Now, and for the past year, it is sitting at almost $26 Canadian. For a game that has barely changed in the past four years, I don't know how they justify the, tw the $10 price raise. And that's not the only concerning monetary point of interest. Since when is it okay for an early access game to release a DLC? Personally, I find this to be a very backhanded thing to do to their community. Be Awesome Games also has a Patreon of which their least expensive tier is $8 Canadian. Keep in mind, Patreon is a subscription-based platform. There's around three or four content creators that make steady Day of Dragons videos, but they never say anything bad about the game ever, probably because in the beginning when creators were raising concerns, those creators got blacklisted and were banned from playing the game against Steam's Terms of Service. I imagine the creators that still make videos don't want to lose the inside access they have, and in a way they're doing the Day of Dragons community a service because without them it's hard to know what's even happening with the game. So Day of Dragons released their first official trailer. I've said enough about the pre to this game, so let's talk about the now and the post. Right off the start, my opinion is that they shouldn't have released the trailer so early before the actual 1.0 release. Maybe not even until after, since what they are showcasing in the trailer doesn't exist in the average player's game yet. The 1.0 release is set, um, or is due, on the 17th of February in 2024. 
Also, the very first dragon you see in the trailer is called a Biolumen, and it's a Kickstarter exclusive. Some people may disagree with me, but personally, I don't think the Biolumen should be a forefront in the trailer, since the average player will not be able to play as it from the spawn menu. Yes, players can be nested in as it, but only if they find two willing players who already have it. Also, the dragons in the trailer make sounds they do not make in the game. Why would they have the shadow scale make the sound of a Utah raptor when they don't make that sound in-game? People know what a Utah raptor sounds like from Jurassic Park and the Isle. What was the purpose of this? And, they have animations you can't use in the game. All of the dragons are shown to have their iconic skins except the Flamestalker. It has the Leukistic skin, which is also a Kickstarter exclusive. That doesn't bother me, but I think it's weird to have all the other dragons with the exact same skin all boasting iconic until the last dragon. I know this is for the purpose of replicating the title image, but why not have all the dragons in different skins to showcase the variety of colors the dragons can come in? After all, it is a trailer for the game. Wouldn't you want people to see the variety of dragon skins the game provides? They also showcase the Acid Spitter in the trailer, which is a DLC dragon. This is another matter of opinion, but again, I don't think they should have showcased it since it's not something that comes with the base game. Also, if they're in the habit of showcasing DLC dragons, why didn't they showcase the Blitz Striker? But Mouse, they hinted at it in the end with the lightning and the roar. Yeah, that's cool and all, but new players aren't gonna know that. And again, if the Acid Spitter Drake is shown, then why hide the Blitz Striker, which will be releasing alongside the Inferno Ravager and Biolumen? Also, no Rude Watcher in the trailer? What's that about? According to the Steam update regarding the 1.0 release, the Brood Watcher is also supposed to come out, so why isn't it in the trailer? I also discovered that the maps, like the um, Oasis map that's shown when the Shadow Scale gets eaten by the giant sandworm thing, is a bot asset, so they aren't even showing all custom stuff in the trailer, which is quite unfortunate. Okay, so the trailer isn't great. That's not the end of the world. But that's not the only thing that annoys me about the game. I'm also annoyed by how much DLC there will be on release, and how much money is being raked in for little to no progress. Even as someone who has subscribed to the Patreon more than once, there's not that much on there about what will be happening with the game in the immediate future. There's a lot of dev vlogs on the progress of the new maps, which is really good. Animation showcases for dragons, which is good, though they don't have their ducks in a row because they're working on things for dragons that aren't due to release for a while, instead of working on things that need to be finished for the 1.0 release. This is probably why they're taking so long to release stuff. Also, they are making a Day of Dragons comic book, which is cool and all, but why? Why are they making a comic? Just why? So what's changed since the 2019 Kickstarter? They have their own map, they have their own dragons, they have skin crafting and nesting and hunger and thirst, they have AI, though it may be rudimentary, at least they have it, they have a stat system too, so there is a game that's not just asset flipped. Personally, I am annoyed with the amount of money that's being asked for what's being provided. How do you justify having a DLC dragon before full release? Not only that, but their web on their website you can pre-order the emote pack DLCs for every non-DLC dragon set to release in 1.0. That's right. That's the reason the Shadow Scale and Flamestalker don't have their Care, Mourn, and Rage emotes. Because they're going to be DLC. Are they kidding? No, unfortunately not. I also think that having Kickstarter skins be required for a lot of the skin crafting is a tad cruel to the average player. Not everyone was able to get in on the Kickstarter, and not everyone knows someone who was. Don't get me wrong, the backers deserve to get good exclusive for backing exclusives for backing the game and spending so much money. I just think it should be done in a way that doesn't throw dirt in the faces of the rest of the Day of Dragons community. 
Yes, I know skins are cosmetic, and there's lots of skins that don't require the Kickstarter skins to get or craft. Yes, I know you can be nested in for the skins you want, but what about people who start their own servers and don't have the exclusives? Now they can't provide Overo, Bloodborne, Lava Ash, Constellation, Painted Light, Painted Sky, just to name a few. Because they don't have, or know, anyone who has, who does have Leucistic or Lumelon. And let's not forget about the Crimson, which is locked behind the middle tier subscription on the Patreon, and the Gold Skin, which is locked behind a 200 US dollar paywall. You only get the Gold Skin key after you've spent 200 dollars on the Patreon. The gold skin also can only be nested in by two parents with gold and whose and the gold skin's crafts take hundreds of nests to make. That's fine though, I guess, at least it's still obtainable. Don't get me wrong, I still love this game, I mean I love dragons so how could I not? But I think that's why this game is doing so well, better than it probably should be with how shady and suspicious everything has been. Because people want a dragon game, and we're willing to put up with whatever to get it, apparently. Which is kind of sad. Overall, I hope this game continues to improve and be what everyone hopes it'll be. But to be honest, I wish I could just make my own dragon game. <laughs> but this one will have to do for now. Please consider that this is mostly my opinion with some facts thrown in, so take it with a grain of salt. Maybe the trailer was perfect and the game is the best game ever, who knows. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.